Good morning and welcome to the Kilinko podcast for Friday the 15th of January. Another tough week. Markets have got momentum to the downside uh, and we're seeing uh, an increasing amount of selling coming through from the commodity complex into the more robust names where we see earnings growth continue to be pretty robust for 2016. So it's become very much indiscriminate in its nature. Um, During these periods, we look for support. We look for support in terms of valuations. Um, The PE on the market is still above the long-term average. In Europe, for example, it's 14 times above uh, the 13-time long-term average. And in terms of technical indicators, so relative strength is a a good technical indicator, we're not quite at the level that we saw in August or other sort of events where we have this sort of similar uh, risk-off feeling in markets. So probably not quite there yet in terms of calling the bottom for this particular period of risk off. Next week will be very important in terms of establishing that. We've got a lot of data, both macroeconomic and earnings related. So as you can see, European PMIs, fully fed inflation data. We've got a, a Chinese GDP data point for, uh, for uh, year on year, which is expected to be 6.9%. Market will be fairly skeptical of that. Um, but as you can see from the economic surprise indexes, uh, the, the macroeconomic data has actually been pretty uh, robust, no sort of severe acceleration to the downside. And we had the Bank of England this week um, who uh, voted 8 for 1 in favour of ch- leaving rates on hold uh, and the probability of uh, a December rate rise is only around 20%. So um, expectations of rate rises are falling both in the UK and in the United States. Um, one of the key issues that's driving markets is clearly the, the price of oil. Um, there's a growing correlation between uh, main, the main macro, the main market ind- indexes and, and the price of oil. Um, we've now seen a greater fall in the price of oil than we saw in uh, 1986, was the previous sort of case study for this very sharp fall uh, in, in oil and trying to you know, uh, assess the impact on the rest of the economy. So that was a fall of uh, 65%. We're now uh, down at 72% uh, peak to trough. Um, and as a result, we, we probably see um, the likelihood of more cuts to CapEx and a bigger impact on the industrial companies um, in 2016, which perhaps needs to be priced into those shares. Um, we've also seen, a, obviously, an increasing probability of uh, dividend cuts in the oil majors as, as this prolonged period of very weak oil prices continues to exist. Um, we still, you know, however, see the possibility of dividend cuts as fairly low. So if you look at the dividend uh, for the majors, at the moment those dividends aren't covered by free cash flow. So the sustainability of those dividends relies on their willingness to leverage up their balance sheet uh, or cut capex or make disposals. Um, so there, there is still significant flex here. So on average, a 15% uh, further cut to capex would cover around 50% of dividends uh, and a 2 to 3% uh, asset disposal of their asset base would cover another 50% for a year. So as you can see, the, the, there is the capacity for them to maintain these dividends through the next couple of years uh, during a period where oil prices uh, remain very low. So the conditions for low oil prices you know, very much remain in place. We've got Iran and Libya coming on stream. Uh, we've got lowering global demand at the moment. Um, so it's still a very difficult situation. Um, equally, um, we're looking at the, the, the mining sector and, and next week we think we'll get confirmation of a, a dividend cut to BHP Billiton. The equity price is already pricing in that, uh, so we could get a 40% cut in the dividend yield Um, and it will still be yielding 6.6%. So um, it's very much a hold for us. We've downgraded it from a buy, however. Um, But the balance sheet remains very robust, and we think the Samarco uh, uh, disaster um, is more than priced in, in terms of the share price. (coughs) So where are the positive trends? Um, uh, One that we're we're increasingly um, uh, positive on Uh, and we've issued a new buy note on on Facebook this week, is in online advertising, uh, which is now around 36% of advertising budgets, all advertising. Um, 
Advertising, all of that growth is coming from mobile advertising, um, and 70% of time spent online is now on mobile. Um, and that's grown from 40% in 2012. So um, looking at the two stocks that we hold for this play, we've got Google and Facebook. Um, just focusing on Google first, um, we expect their online mobile advertising to accelerate in terms of their growth rates from 28 to 35 percent year on year, um, as increasingly this av advertising budget is captured by walled gardens. So, um, if you look at YouTube as an example, um, this business, this this platform is growing by 40 percent compound annual gro growth rate, uh, and is now a larger advertising platform than Time Warner. Um, so both Google and Facebook now have the largest, two largest advertising platforms uh, in all advertising budgets. Facebook um, is particularly strong in mobile display uh, and we feel this year will be a great year for Instagram um, and, and therefore we've put it on the buy list this week. So looking at the week ahead, um, it's, it's busy as I said. So in the UK we've got Unilever. Um, on Tuesday, Wednesday, we've got Goldman Sachs. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Thursday, we've got Land Securities, Starbucks, which is a new buy idea, Verizon, Union Pacific. Uh, Friday, we've got SAP. Um, we've also got a number of banks continuing to come through. We've got Netflix, will be, which will be interesting. Um, we've also got American Express, which will be a good read across for Visa. So looking at Goldman Sachs, we had JP Morgan this week, yesterday, the results beat expectations, so that takes a little bit of fear out of uh, the, the results for Goldman Sachs next week. So looking at the read across, their fixed uh, uh, interest and, and, and commodities business uh, was down 3%, so fixed income was flat, equity trading was down 7%. So, so that guides to Goldman Sachs being flat, slightly down in that that part of their business. M&A was very strong for JP Morgan, up 43%. So uh, that's a good read across for Goldman Sachs, which is the market leader, although only 20% of the revenue is coming from M&A. Um, key focus will be the loan impairments, um, particularly in the energy sector, um, where JP Morgan are fairly uh, uh, conservatively positioned. Um, but we continue to like Goldman Sachs for the business model, for the ability for them to, to leverage up from here for the ability of interest rates to change their, their earnings power. Um, and we also like their very innovative approach. So 25% of the workforce now working within technology in the group. So uh, we think it's a key one for the future. So thanks for listening. Have a good weekend.